Today we're exploring three different curries from three different countries. And I'm gonna start with my favorite, the Japanese curry that I'm gonna make with udon. I wanna thank Kroger for sponsoring today's video and everything I got in this video was bought at my local Ralph's. I'm gonna start by drizzling some olive oil into my pot and then I'm gonna let it get hot. Then we're gonna add some onions that I've already chopped up and some garlic. Just let it perfume a little bit. And then I was really excited to find the shaved beef right here at Kroger. It reminds me of like sukiyaki. So we're gonna saute it real quick with some sliced shiitake mushrooms that I also found in the produce section. All the ingredients you find at Kroger include the freshest selection of produce from your local farm. And let me just say I load it up and I'm gonna show you guys how I use them in this video. Now I'm gonna season it with a splash of soy sauce until everything is cooked through and then we're gonna remove the meat and the mushroom into a separate bowl. The shaved beef is so thin, I don't wanna keep it cooking because then it could get tough. But now we're gonna work on our curry sauce. I like using bone broth and I found this one. It's by Simple Truth Organics, Ralph's or Kroger's private label and it just adds like a really beautiful richness to the curry, especially when you have it as like a soup with udon. I'm gonna deglaze the pot, all the juicy flavorful bits at the bottoms coming off, and then I'm gonna add some more of the broth. If you guys want the full recipe, I'll have it written out in the description box below. And then as it's heating up, we're gonna add some golden curry blocks. I'm super excited to find these Japanese curry blocks at Ralph's because honestly, when I was in college, I lived on these, and you can only find them at the Asian market, so this was a really great find. So they come in blocks like this. It kind of reminds me of like, a chocolate bar except this is a curry block and you just drop it directly into the broth so we're gonna let this come to a boil and the curry block will dissolve in the broth and it'll kind of thicken up so here's my package of udon every package of udon kind of has different directions for me I'm gonna cook it in this udon broth because I want it to absorb the curry flavor and also thicken up the soup we'll cook it for a few minutes until the udon is cooked through chewy and bound Give it a quick taste to see if it's flavorful enough. Mm, that's perfect. All right, so to serve, I'm gonna add the udon and then ladle on some of the curry broth, then top it with our shaved beef mushroom mixture, and of course, some spring onions for that color and burst of freshness. So this dish makes about two servings or one, depending on how much you love it. You guys see how easy it was to come together? That was delicious, almost like a restaurant. So this next dish is another Southeast Asian or Indian dish called butter chicken, also known as merg makani. So you do need quite a bit of spices for this recipe, but I was able to find everything at my local Ralph's. I'm gonna start with the garam masala, which is a combination of warming spices. Then we have some cumin. And then here I also have some curry powder. I always like looking for ones with turmeric, coriander, just like a variety of extra warming spices, and it comes in a box like this right here. Ground cinnamon, oregano, and a little bit of salt. It's quite a bouquet of spices here, and it smells so good, but now I'm gonna give it a mix, mix, mix. So now to the spices, I'm gonna add my chicken right here. I like using chicken thighs. I just find that it's more tender for this recipe, and I'm just gonna quarter each piece. But if you want, you can always Use chicken breast and then marinate it with an extra half cup of yogurt. So I've added the chicken to the bowl and now I'm just gonna mix it thoroughly so it coats in all that spice. So even though it looked like we had a ton of spices earlier, once you add the chicken, it really coats everything and it's really not that much. You have just the right amount here. Now I'm gonna let it sit for 10 minutes to really soak in the flavor while we work on the rest of the ingredients. So here I have a heavy bottom pot and I'm just gonna start off by cooking the aromatic I'm going to turn it on to medium high heat and then drizzle a little bit of olive oil. Then I have some onions that I've cut into larger chunks and I'll just cook that up first for a minute or two until it's nice and translucent. Then we'll add in some garlic, a lot of garlic, and ginger. Once you can start smelling everything together, add in the chicken and cook it for about three to five minutes until it's almost all cooked. It's starting to smell so good. The spices are really toasting up. So right before adding in any other ingredients, I like to deglaze the pan with some water just to get the flavorful bits at the bottom up. 
Then I'll add half a can of this Simple Truth Organics crushed tomatoes. I like crushed tomatoes for its texture, that way you don't have to puree it later. Um, and then we're just gonna let the tomato sauce and chicken really cook down. All right, so once I've added in the crushed tomatoes, I'm gonna go ahead and cover it up and let it cook for another 15 minutes. And then open up the lid and really make sure that the tomato is caramelized. Now I'm just gonna let it simmer and stew for another five minutes so that the tomato sauce really gets like concentrated and thickens up before adding in the coconut milk and butter. That's where the butter chicken comes from. All right, so it's pretty much done, but just give it a taste to see if you need to adjust anything, add more mm. salt. It's creamy, but I think it needs a little more salt. And I'll show you guys how I like to serve this. So this is not traditional, but I always love to add an element of freshness to my dishes. So to my plate, I'm gonna add a bed of baby spinach. Then right on top of it, I'm gonna add my hot rice to wilt down the spinach a little bit. Now I spoon on the curry with a lot of the sauce. And then of course I always love adding like a tomato, onion, mint relish on top of my curry. It just adds like a nice crunch and balances everything out. Final touch, some cilantro. And here is our butter chicken. Usually Indian food can be a little bit heavy for me, but lightening it up with all of these fresh produce really makes it balance and I just love eating it like this. Mmm. It's creamy, super flavorful from all of our spices, but it's still fairly mild, so you're not getting like whoosh, spice in your face, you know what I mean? And for all of the extra sauce we have, I love having some naan to dip it. So now we're making a Thai red curry with shrimp. This is gonna give your favorite Thai takeout a run for its money. So I like loading my Thai curry with veggies. Today I'm using asparagus, which is in peak season right now. I found this at Ralph's and it just looks so yummy. Um, I'm also gonna use some red bell pepper and bok choy for added greens. To make sure you get like the most tender part of your asparagus, all you have to do is just bend and snap. And then you're left with just the tender part taking out the tough part. So we'll do the same for the rest and then I'll just cut up my red bell pepper into strips and then I'm gonna get like a few leaves of bok choy, just chop it up into smaller pieces. Honestly, that was probably the longest part of this recipe because it comes together so fast. Now in my pot, I'm gonna drizzle some olive oil and we're gonna cook the shrimp on each side for about two minutes. When cooking the shrimp, you wanna arrange it in a single layer. I add the chopped garlic in there to season it with a little bit of salt and then I remove the shrimp. So originally I was gonna do this recipe with salmon, which would have been really good too, but then I saw the simple truth jumbo shrimp and look how it turned out. It's so large and succulent and beautiful, but if you don't wanna do it with shrimp, you can always sub for tofu, chicken, whatever favorite protein you'd like or just Make a veggie curry. All right, so we'll drizzle a little bit more olive oil to get it going, and then we're gonna cook off our vegetables. I'm gonna add my asparagus and bell pepper with some onions first, let it sizzle, and then I'm gonna add my red curry paste to season it up, like a nice spoonful. Let it dissolve, and then we'll add some coconut milk. I got this Kroger Thai Inspirations Premium Coconut Milk, which is perfect for this recipe. We'll just add a tiny little bit of broth, and then season it also with some fish sauce, brown sugar, and let everything come to a boil. Now we'll add our bok choy in to let it wilt, and then the shrimp back in to warm through, and then we'll serve it. I like to serve it with rice, but you can always serve it with like rice noodle. That's also really good. But then I finish it off with some lime juice and then I'll garnish it with some cilantro. Creamy, flavorful. This definitely tastes better than any takeout. Mm. And I love being able to add all the seasonal vegetables in here too and mix and match my own protein. You guys definitely have to give this a try. But it's really hard for me to decide which curry is my favorite because I love them all. So I want you guys to comment down below and let me know what you thought. Thanks to Kroger for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Bye.